Guys, it's time we as a society finally admit it. We done did dang dogs dang dirty, dang it. I know it. You know it. This giant isopod knows it. In our insatiable pursuit of cute and funny looking dogs, we perverted the very nature of what a dog even is. And yet, we still like to say that dogs are man's best friend. Man's best friend, huh? <laughs> man's best friend. Then how do you explain how we've transformed dogs into monstrosities through decades of selective breeding? Who does this to a best friend? Or this? Or this? Don't you turn your eyes away. Gaze upon the horrors that man hath wrought. Look at it! Look at it! Look at it! I want all of you to look at it! These aren't dogs, they're mutants. And not cool mutants with superpowers like the X-Men. Unless you count having your skin melt off your body as a superpower. Now, I'm not the first one to address this. The deformities that result from dog breeding is a well-trodden topic. Why, all the way back in 2014, there was an Adam Ruins Everything video about the cruelty of purebreds. That was 10 whole years ago. <laughs> but last I checked, these beasts still walk among us. So clearly there needs to be an occasional reminder that we're screwing dogs six ways from Sunday. So let's run through some of the more egregious examples. First off, we've got the pug, a breed so inbred and deformed that, and this is not a joke, Researchers have determined it can no longer even be considered a typical dog. Which I think we all kind of knew deep down based on the way it looks. Dude, every time I see a pug's face, it takes me 10 seconds to figure out what I'm even looking at. If you can even call this prism of non-Euclidean geometry a face. It's just a labyrinth of flesh and sadness. Actually, fun fact, if you look at a pug's face under a microscope, there's a tiny minotaur wandering through its skin folds at all times. And that's a fact. Vets will say that it's not true, but they're lying. It's true. And it's not just looks. The pug's skull is so smooth pushed in that it causes breathing issues. <laughs> and neurological problems because its skull is too small for its brain. I don't think those are skin folds on its forehead. I think that's the outline of its brain. The pug is prone to infections in the folds of its skin, hip dislocation, walking problems, breathing issues, spinal issues due to its curly tail, and the cherry on top of the crap cake is that they have the highest risk of obesity of any dog breed. And some of them suffer from a debilitating neurological disease called pug dog encephalitis. You know you're in bad shape when they name a disease after you. And the deformity train doesn't stop there because also sometimes their eyes pop out of their heads. Uh, uh, what? Why does that happen? What did they do? Crossbreed the pug's ancestor with a Mr. Potato Head? I didn't know that their faces falling out of their heads was something you even had to worry about as a dog owner. I guess I kind of took it as a given that if I ever got a dog, its face would stay on. But all right, there's a nice new addition to your daily anxiety if you own a pug. How do you create a dog breed whose eyeballs fall out and not immediately write that off as a failed experiment? I can only assume that whatever dog scientist invented the pug was in the middle of trying to create a new breed and then died of a stroke because there's no way this thing was the end goal. A pug isn't the before or after. It's the in-between. The pug's body and head kind of don't look like they even belong together. It's like a hybrid creature from Greek mythology. It's got the body of a crappy dog and the head of an even crappier dog. I don't know what to conclude other than the universe wants these things dead, man. I mean, how many different ways can nature signal that science has gone too far? Also, I don't know if this is technically a health issue, but pugs emit all manner of ungodly noises. <laughs> This is what I imagine ancient creatures from the Mesozoic era sounded like. A lot of people don't even know that the pug is the result of decades of selective breeding. They think it's just like a naturally occurring subspecies of dog, which I don't know how you can think this is a naturally occurring specimen in the animal kingdom. You thought this was the result of survival of the fittest? A pug wouldn't last 10 minutes out in the wild. The only natural defense it has is that it's so revolting looking that predators might think it's inedible. And despite all of its issues, somehow the pug is still one of the most popular dog breeds. It's ugly as hell, it can't breed, that's got Mr. Potato Head's disease and people are still buying them in droves. Then these people take their pugs to the vet like, um, fix my dog. Why can't you fix it? Like, what? There ain't no fixing a fucking pug, man. It's your fault for buying a dog breed who's so deformed that its lungs are in its asshole. Hey, dude, it's not funny to make dogs deformed for our amusement like this. The pug is not a toy. It's a, and there's an asterisk next to every word I'm about to say here. It's a living, breathing dog. And maybe it's time we show it mercy. And by show it mercy, I mean stop breeding them so they can go extinct. But look, dude, don't take this the wrong way. I don't hate pugs. I feel sorry for them. And I'm not alone on this. The state of pug is so dire that even PETA wants them to go extinct. Next up, Chihuahuas. I don't know what the appeal is of a dog that hates everyone and everything, but if that's what you're into, then Chihuahuas are for you. They're always topping the lists of most aggressive dog breeds. It seems like all they want to do is bite your fingers off. 
fact, if you go to the pet food aisle of a store, the Chihuahua food is just a bag of fingers. Thank God they're too tiny to kill us, or else they'd be the greatest threat to mankind. And like, what's the one thing everyone wants to do when they see a dog? Pet it, right? They want to pet the dog. And you stupid breeders made a dog that doesn't want to be pet. But you don't even have to be interacting with the Chihuahua to make it angry. It'll get mad at you just for existing. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> what I, what I do? He didn't do anything to you. You know what? I don't even want to pet these things. If you ask me to pet your chihuahua, I'm going to say no. Yeah, I'm glad you could finally visit, man. So this is our home. Um, this is our dog, Buddy. Oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> Someone's not in a good mood. <laughs> oh, he might seem a little grumpy, but he's fine. His bark is worse than his bite. You can pet him. Yeah, I don't think so. Come on, pet him. You know what? I'm good, actually. I'm good. I think he's good, too. He seems like he doesn't want me to pet him. Oh, he does that. He acts all tough, but really, he's just a sweet little guy. <laughs> Come on, pet him. No, I don't think so. He seems really angry. Oh, well, pet him, and he'll be fine. Pet him. No, I don't I don't want to. Pet him. Pet him. No, no, I don't want to pet him. Pet him. Pet the dog. I'm not going to pet, pet him. him. Pet buddy. Pet, pet buddy. him. Pet I'm the not dog. petting that pet dog. Him. Pet buddy. Pet, pet buddy. the dog. Pet, pet him. him. <laughs> dog was spooked him. And what's even worse is that they have the longest lifespan of any dog breed. I think this proves that meanness is the fountain of youth. That's why there's so many mean old people. I think it's the boundless hatred for all things that keeps the body going. I feel like in the future, chihuahuas are going to evolve to the point where like the meanness center of their brains grows so huge that they just live forever. In the distant future, long after all life on earth has faded away, it'll be nothing but these mutant chihuahuas roaming the earth. They'll have total dominion over the entire world and they'll still be angry. So yeah, I gave chihuahuas two dismembered thumbs down. Bulldogs, the living try not to cry challenge. Bulldogs have bone and joint problems, skin problems, the most allergies of any breed, and of course, breathing issues. <laughs> The bulldog looks awful, sounds awful, and suffers from excessive gas, so it also smells awful. It's truly an assault on all the senses. And difficulty breathing means difficulty panting, so they're prone to overheating. I feel like I'm suffering just watching these things. And then some people have the audacity to call their bulldog lazy. Oh, my bulldog's lazy. He doesn't want to walk. Lazy? Hey, maybe it needs a break from constant agony. You'd want to chill out too if every physical movement caused you to almost die of heat exhaustion. Hey, you think they want to just lay around all the time? They want to frolic through fields and chase squirrels and ride skateboards and mostly ride skateboards. There's a lot of bulldogs riding skateboards for some reason. It's kind of a thing. I'm not really sure why. Bulldogs are like the Tony Hawk of the dog world. I guess you could say they're the Tony dog. <laughs> I don't get it. Exotic Bully. If you've never heard of the Exotic Bully before, imagine a gym bro who's also a dog who's also a demon. This thing looks like it would give you tips on how to improve your bench press and then it would feast on your intestines. I've never seen a more murderous looking dog in all my life. This thing looks like it would break through a brick wall just to taste one ounce of your flesh. If you ever encounter one of these things in real life, I suggest you call your family to tell them you love them because you've got seconds to live. Even the pictures that Google shows you when you search for it are terrifying. I'm assuming these top pictures are before it kills you and the bottom are after it kills you. Like most nightmares, it's mercifully short-lived. The exotic bully's lifespan can be as little as three years. Nature is clearly trying to cut its life short, just like the exotic bully will try to cut your life short if you ever encounter it. So if one of these monstrosities ever charges at you to attack you, your only hope is that you can outrun it long enough for it to reach the end of its ridiculously short lifespan before it catches you. Now supposedly, supposedly, the exotic bully is not aggressive, and it's actually known for being very friendly and mild-mannered in temperament. Well, tell that to the 50 pounds of muscle on its body and the Joker smile on its face. Also, can we really trust whoever wrote that exotic bullies are friendly? They may have been coerced into writing positive things by an exotic bully. Do not get an exotic bully. They are vicious and they'll kill you without a second thought. And oh, hey there, champ. Uh, I was just writing your profile for the website here. Uh, exotic bullies are known to be friendly and affectionate and definitely won't tear you limb from limb. The exotic bully is rare and can fetch a pretty penny between $2,000 and $5,000 because I guess looking like a deranged toad on steroids is a hot commodity in the dog world. But yeah, if you do buy one, you should probably buy a casket too because this thing is at death's doggy door from basically the moment it's born. Dachshund, the classic wiener dog. The dachshund looks like a hot dog and is built like a hot dog. Its elongated back causes spinal issues. It's prone to sudden paralysis after jumping 
jumping, twisting, exercise, or even being picked up. So basically, if a dachshund does anything besides remain motionless, it's gambling with its life. And they're also one of the breeds most prone to being overweight. Can you breathe? Which is extra dangerous for them because if they become obese, they can reach a point of no return where their stumpy little legs can't support their bodies anymore, at which point their only option left is to accept their fate and perish. Just goes to show a thick wiener isn't always a good thing. Great Danes. What can you say about Great Danes? Except that they're so full of love, their hearts are just too big. Literally. They frequently suffer from enlarged hearts, and it causes rampant heart failure. Okay, let's just cover some deformities quickly here. Loose skin. For the dog lover who believes in separation of skin and body, you can get a dog like a bloodhound, or a basset hound, or a Neapolitan mastiff that wears its skin like a kid in an oversized Halloween costume. God, just look at this poor dog. They really set the deformity slider all the way to f*** you on this one, didn't they? Man, droopy skin in general is like such a cruel thing to do to a dog. All it does is blind the dog and cause skin infections. I don't know why people think it's cute to watch a dog droop drown in a pool of its own skin, but man, we're sick creatures. Excessive amounts of fur. These dogs can't show the normal visual communication cues that dogs rely on, like facial expressions, ear movement, and tail movement. You can't tell what's going on under all that fur. This dog could be standing, sitting, or dead. There's no way to tell. Excessively large dogs. They get joint dislocations, spinal problems, heart problems. Also, why do dogs need to be giant? Does the world need that? I mean, good God, look at this behemoth. Am I supposed to pet this thing or ride it into battle? You know what? If I ever see someone walking around with one of these things in public, I'm hopping on and riding it. I don't care that it's your dog. I'm riding it. If you walk around with a dog that big and rideable, it's your fault. What are you gonna do? Pull me off? Good luck trying to catch me. Okay, this video is getting a lot longer than I originally intended. I'm just gonna do a quick light round of various breeds that I wanna complain about. I don't know if these dogs are natural breeds or purebreds or what. English Toy Spaniel. There's stiff competition in the flat face Olympics. This dog's skull is so small, it could probably taste its own brain. Beaver Terrier. I think this dog is born with a bow tie or a hair clip on its head because I've never seen it without one. Also, the cuteness is offset by the fact that it looks like the old guy from Kill Bill. Chinese Crested. This thing's head needs to tell its body that it's supposed to be furry because clearly it didn't get the memo. This looks like something from the Dark Crystal. Bedlington Terrier. Hey, either be a dog or be a sheep. Pick one! Bull Terrier. Looks like the bully from A Christmas Story. Borzoi. You're not real. Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever. Don't make your name your entire life story. Get a shorter name. Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Get a smaller head. Get more fur. Get less fur. Get, get, get a, get out. Just get out of here. Go. And then we have extinct breeds like the Curry that died out many years ago, which thank God for that. Okay, now quickly, just as a reminder of what a natural dog breed looks like, let's take a look at the Canaan, a breed that has been largely genetically untouched by mankind. Look at that. Look at that. Now that's a dog ass dog. The face that's not squished in, the legs that are proportionate to the rest of its body, a tail with just the right amount of curl. Now look dude, even if you don't care about the unethical dog breeding industry, even if you don't like dogs, let me tell you why you should care about this. Because in the future, and I'm calling it now, if we continue to let this practice go unchecked on dogs, eventually I give it 30 years tops. Rich people, are gonna be doing this to poor people. They're gonna pay to have poor people selectively bred to create offspring with deformities for their own amusement. They'll be at their rich people parties and be like, bring out the mutant. Then this deformed human will roll out and they'll all laugh at it. And they'll be like, look at it trying to breathe. <laughs> Anyway, guys, I want to let you know that I'm currently building a clubhouse of the coolest people on YouTube. And if you want to join, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button and you're in, baby. Check out Slovakian Volchak. I mean, this is a wolf, right? It's a wolf.